All right, so my name's Carl Erickson. I want to talk a little bit about why uh, night vision's not just cool to have, but why it's an essential tool for our military. And it, it brings a lot to the fight for civilians also. Now, military, when do we conduct most of our combat operations? We conduct them in the dark. You know, the U.S. military owns the night. And the reason we're able to say that is because we've got the technological edge that over our enemy that gives us that great advantage. And besides having the aircraft that can fly overhead and all the satellites that can do this and that and drop the satellite guided bombs on the ground for your average warfighter, what gives us that edge on the modern battlefield is night vision. Now, I've got 25 plus years uh, past experience uh, in uh, the military, primarily special forces as a Green Beret. Been using night vision ever since I was a private. Now, back then, not meaning to date myself, but uh, I started out with like PVS-2 mounted on an old M16A2 rifle and uh, night vision goggles with the old PVS-15s, big ugly things you'd see in movies like uh, Silence of the Lambs. Thermal sights were these big, huge tripod mounted things, or you normally saw them mounted on vehicles. Uh, technology has come leaps and bounds, but even back then, as bad as that technology was back then, it gave us a great edge over our enemy. The enemy had to rely on that light coming in from the stars or coming in from the moon, headlights, street lights. You start getting inside buildings. Uh, where the power's off and now they're having to use flashlights and look around and that, that's just giving away their, their positions. So by us even just having old, poor technology, it was, it was leaps and bounds above what the enemy had and we did, we owned the night. Now, fast forward, our technology it keeps improving over and over and over again. And we've gone to Gen 2 night vision, Gen 3, uh, Gen 3 Plus, thermals have uh, come along leaps and bounds. Now, we look at using night vision in the military primarily uh, for different things. One is situational awareness. Now, whether I'm driving or whether I'm moving around on a modern battlefield, I need night vision for my eyes mounted up here. We would run them on head harnesses in the jungles or in the forests, uh, the old PVS-7s, uh, we're up to the PVS-14s, different generations of them. Monoculars. Now, I prefer personally a monocular because that allows me to keep my other eye uh, unblocked. And even though it, it's not seeing as well in the dark, if I have to swap out real quick, um, go to white light, let's say, that other eye is already accustomed to what I've got. Um, there are night vision sets that have four monoculars spread out at different directions. It gives a, like a driver, let's say, a, a wider view, peripheral vision to an extent. They're great for driving. Um, they're great for just wearing on head harnesses or mounting on helmets, same type of way. And just good for giving you situational awareness on the battlefield. Now you add to that some of your IR lasers on rifles, and now you're not having to bring your head down and look through a weapon-mounted night vision scope. I literally can just use that IR uh, uh, invisible aiming laser on that gun and I'm now able to engage targets without giving away my position by keying that flashlight mounted on the side of my M4, let's say. Now, thermal sights, they've gotten a lot smaller. We're still using them, uh, handheld, panning around. A, a great example of that is while I had great night vision mounted on my sniper rifles over in the Horn of Africa, instead of having to pick up that big sniper rifle and look around for any bad guys, Pulling security in my little sniper hide site in the middle of the in the middle of the desert, a nice small hand handheld thermal sight. I now could pan around 360, and without having to do large movements that would draw attention from the enemy, I'm now able to look around and uh, even small bits of heat, small heat signatures. It might be a mouse, a bird, whatever would pop out. Gave me the warm and fuzzy, knowing that if it was actual bad guys approaching my hide site. I would see them long before they would get anywhere near me. So there are places for some of the small handheld ones for situational awareness. Now for actually engaging the enemy, back in the day we would use, let's say, the, the PVS-2 or the PVS-14. Our night vision wasn't good enough back then so to allow us to see long distances enough to identify friend or foe or to see trace and read winds. 
So our sights were primarily used at shorter ranges. We wouldn't put them on the sniper rifles. We'd have them mounted on the, the spotter's uh, semi-auto gun, and that was so he could pull local security. And if we had to engage targets, our limit was basically two, 300 meters. Good, uh, mounted on the gun, so it held a zero rear well. You didn't have to turn on an IR laser, which would give away your position. Worked very well. You still had the crosshairs in it or an aiming reticle. You can engage the targets two, 300 meters. Fast forward modern day, now night vision, the I squared has gotten to the point now to where they are so clear we can identify friend or foe out at extended distances, five, six, seven, sometimes 800 meters. Now, we don't, on our sniper rifles, we don't want to pull this nice pretty day optic that's zeroed and has got dope out to a mile. We don't want to pull this off our gun. Our generations of uh, night vision have come to the point now to where we can actually mount a good Gen 3 tube in front of that day optic and I'm no longer having to swap guns back and forth. I'm no longer having to worry about taking this off and losing that zero and then having to putting it back on in the morning. Mount this in front. Now, just 15 years ago, the thought of mounting anything in front of your objective lens you just didn't do it because the laws of physics alone just say, hey, anytime you mount something or put another lens in front of this objective lens, uh, you're going to throw the zero off. Improvements in CNC machines, co uh, computer zeroing, we've reached the point now to where you can really add a day optic in front of that, uh, a night optic in front of that dedicated day optic. It's called a clip-on, short for it and uh, it maintains that zero, plus or minus uh, a minute of angle, half a minute of angle, depending on the weapon system. Now, that gives us that, long, that ability now for snipers to engage at long distances. Because of the leaps and bounds, we're now able to engage at those long distances. Now, why weren't we doing that back uh, right after Vietnam? Why weren't we doing that back in the 80s, 90s? Well, we couldn't read winds back then. We couldn't see trace. Now, um, I need to be able to see what the wind's doing in order to do my calculations. I can figure out barometric pressure, temperature, all that stuff in the dark. I can still do that. But being unable to judge the winds, I, it takes a major chunk out of the formula that I need in order for our snipers to engage at long range. However, these new generations of optics, they are spot on. I can see grass blowing. I can see those, shea, uh, th those flags blowing out in the middle of the cemeteries. And I can now use that to judge wind direction and wind speed. I can watch that trash blowing down the road in Iraq. I can gauge the uh, speed of the winds. I can calculate the direction, plug that into my formula, and I can now come up with a ballistic solution that will allow me to engage targets at extended ranges. Now, thermal sites also have come leaps and bounds. We used to uh, focus primarily on using your thermals for acquiring the target, pan around, find that blur, and then we'd go back to using the I square to identify, is it friend or foe? You know, is it armed, is it unarmed? Is it a threat, is it not a threat? Is it a threat that warrants deadly force? Right? So we would have to go back to that. However, our thermals have come to the point now to where they are so crystal clear I can see, hey, that guy's got an AK. He's got an RPG mounted up on his shoulder. So when now, instead of having to carry multiple different weapon systems, there's a, a lot of applications now for mounting uh, the thermal sights on the actual combat guns, uh, whether it is the semi-auto guns for close in or even the bolt guns for extended ranges out on, the, out on that extended battlefield. So we've really come leaps and bounds uh, for the military using night vision. Now, I've, since I've retired, I've transferred. I'm a civilian now, proud civilian. I, I still focus now. My job uh, working for Tier 1 Group is I went from shooting guns and blowing stuff up to now I teach Americans' finest how to shoot guns and blow stuff up. Uh, so I do a lot of training. I get to still work with the military, but I also get to do a lot with the civilian market. Uh, whether you're looking at using night vision for hunting hogs or coyotes in the dark, or whether you want to, uh, let's say you're a big deer hunter, you can't legally hunt deer in the dark. However, you can use night vision to pattern your deer. Everybody wants to know where that big buck is going uh, right before the sun comes up. 
When does it come out what you're doing? They're relying on all these trail cameras and everything else. Get out there, show up a couple hours before sunrise and watch with, a, with that good night vision and you can say, wow, there is that 18 point buck, the prize that I know is on my farm, but I just don't know what his route is, where he's going, because I'm only catching him here and there on cameras. Get out there with my night vision. I now can watch him and I can pattern him develop the same info, the intelligence that the military is using to find and track bad guys, I can now do that on that prize trophy buck that I'm looking for. So there are applications for the night vision. Now, uh, just in the, the uh, civilian realm, what, Armacite in particular, any new little idea that hunters have, hey, I'd like to have this capability, I'd like to have that capability, I want to film it so I can show my grandkids just how great the hunt was coming up to mounting that big trophy up on the wall. And it's a night vision brings a lot of great tools to that. And Armacite, they have a great, great customer uh, satisfaction and great, great interface with the customers. You bring them that idea, hey, I would like this new capability they're gonna get guys on it right away and uh, they're gonna put it together. So whether you're wanting to mount that recorder to film that hunt or whether you want to use that, that uh, laser range finder in the dark through your night vision, whether you want to use the applied ballistic softwares and get the, all the way deep into the weeds and run your thermal with all the applied ballistics and do everything for extended range shooting. For a civilian, uh, it's not, that whole end of the spectrum isn't just for the military. You can get out there now as a civilian and while, well, it may have been great, wow, I hit that mile steel target five years ago, and, and that's fun, that's great. Go back out and do it again in the dark. And I'm here to tell you, it'll put that smile back on your face and you'll be like, you know, the money that I had to talk my spouse into letting me spend to get that good night vision, it's not just for the military, it's money well spent and it's going to give you that edge, it really is.